Brook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. I like you, son. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Lots of love in the air and lots of talk about on this edition of Donnie Brook. Thanks to our friends at the Gatesworth who are making this program possible. Thank you so much, Gatesworth. Let's meet our panelists, starting with the media veteran herself from KTRS, Wendy Weiss. We welcome her back from her one week vacation. <laughs> it's the suspension. The, the suspension, yeah, <laughs> right. Mr. Bill McClellan joins us from the St. Louis Post Dispatch. He's one of our founders, as is Ray Hartman, back with the Riverfront Times. He's got his second column this week. And from STLMag.com and the St. Louis American, dressed in red for Valentine's Day, Alvin Reed. And uh, I think we'll kick things off with you and your sartorial splendor, Alvin. Um, a couple of things have happened since we met last week on Donnybrook with regard to Better Together. Number one, Better Together, about 10 days after launching the proposal to merge the city and the county, yanked it out of Jeff City, withdrew it, and then reconfigured it and submitted it again on Monday. A little strange. They announced some public hearings, which will be limited to 150 people each in an area of 1.3 million that are going to be <laughs> merged, and there's going to be eight of those, I believe. And then Tim Fitch, now a member of the St. Louis County Council, former police chief for St. Louis County, said that St. Louis should go like Detroit and actually file for bankruptcy. If it's got monetary problems, the best thing would be to go low and then try and work its way back. What do you think about that? Well, first and foremost, may I say, happy birthday, Mom. 83 oh, years old today. Yeah, Valentine's nice. birthday. Yeah. I get the splendor from her. All right, okay. okay. She's, she's very sharp. Yeah. Happy birthday. Now, Tim Fitch. All right. Uh, you know, a few years back, when he was leaving the police department, I said, I think Tim Fitch is going to run for office sooner rather than later. And Tim Fitch must have been watching on the show where I said, like, Detroit got their stuff together. They declared the bankruptcy. Uh, Mayor Bing, Dave Bing, former NBA player, comes in. He says, look, we're, we're, we're tearing it down. We're clearing land, whole acres around the downtown area. And as Tim Fitch said uh, on his interview, you can walk around safely in Detroit now. It has totally changed. I like his idea. I like any idea that stands in the way of better together because it, this is a just a power grab, money grab, 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 all anything mm. that you want to say. And uh, as far as the 150 people, that it's easy enough to get 80 people who you know are going to be on your side and then leave, um, you know, 70 people mm. on the other side. Hey, Alvin, I got a quick question about Detroit. What happened to the people who lived in the areas that got torn down? Well, I think a lot of it was empty buildings vacant. And, and vacant, kind of like parts of uh, a lot of North St. Louis is. And I, I, I won't, look, there was... There was a fight against it because some businesses and some people were just basically knocked out of the way. But I would go with that decision way before I would go with anything that's coming out of better to I'd, I'd be hesitant to, to, uh, to, to uh, Tim Fitch. First of all, it's great to have Tim Fitch back. I mean, as, again, I'm back as a week, weekly communist and, and, <laughs> and very happy that guys like Tim Fitch are out there because he's colorful, never going to he was a good police chief, but he also was great with quotes. And some of them are, Come on. I think, right. Okay, here's the deal. In, in Detroit, 70 the people who received pensions took a 25% haircut. They lost 25% of their pensions when they did it. I think it's, too, it's premature uh, to talk bankruptcy for the city of St. Louis. It is not insolvent. It's got an unfended pe pension liability, but a lot of cities have that. On the other point, on Better Together, I think it's atrocious that they're limiting pub when they particularly something this important. There shouldn't be a venue less than a thousand people right. that, involved in this, and I think that's outrageous. And I have I, I want to be very clear about this. I've never met Mr. Sinkfield. I have never met him. I obviously uh, I I think what he's done has been terrific in terms of the uh, the the Chess Hall of Fame and his obvious love for the city of St. Louis. But he needs to come out from behind the curtain. This whole Wizard of Oz, you know, he's gathering all of the politicians, all of the media people. That is turning people off faster than, than anything ever could. 
And just, you know, people keep talking about Indianapolis and Louisville and Nashville as these, you know, hey, these are fantastic stories that paint rosy pictures. Nobody, no other one, no other community has had to have the vote from another part of the state mm. bring this well, into well, yeah, I reality. I, I agree with that. I think the idea of outstate voting is bad. On Rex Sinfield, and I should point out, I have not yet been gathered in. You know, if Mr. Sinfield's <laughs> Watson, I'm always interested in offers. But I, I don't think you can blame him for this. I think you have to go to Nancy Rice. I mean, she's she's running this thing. But he's paying she, for yeah, it. He's bankrolling yeah. it. Right, and right. But, but, but I mean, he's just throwing money at something he thinks is a good idea. And if the rest of us think that it's nefarious the way they're doing it, and I agree with you, I think Nancy Rice is the person. Oh, you know, I, I disagree. About. I think, Bill, it's got to be Rex Singfield. And I've met him. He's a gentleman. I like him. I think he's a lot of, done a lot of good. But he... Gathered in. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> However, no, the... but I disagree with him on this. I, I think this whole thing is his plan to reduce the earnings tax. Because if the city does have problems with a pension, you know, as, as Ray points out, and that'll be a real problem if the city declares bankruptcy and all those pensioners living in the county and elsewhere get their, you know, annuities reduced. He, how, how is it that we're actually reducing the earnings tax at a time when the city needs money. So I don't think Nancy Rice came out, up with We're that. phasing it out, Charlie. Right. That's what we're doing. Well, we're phasing well, it out. Well, I'm not talking about the plan itself. I'm talking about the way they're doing it, which is what I thought Wendy was talking oh, exactly. about. Exactly. Right. Oh, yeah. well, 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 I mean, the plan's, I don't like the plan. Are we talking about the changes in the plan at some point? I don't know. I, the, the, well, a little bit of everything, right? Well, because the changes <laughs> they made, it was like, oh, you know, they, they pulled it back and put it back out and said, oh, nothing to see here. Right, just, just a couple changes. words here and they there. They were not nothing to see here. Now, the, the, I'll admit they're above our pay grade, but Your they had to do, yeah. no, I think everyone's here. They had to do <laughs> with the ability, with the bond market and the, and the, the ability of cities to issue bonds and the big story about that is, if it's true, and you read the 160-page report, and yes, I would waded through it, is that how thorough they've been and how thoughtful they've been and how many years they've been doing. And then at the very end, a major substantive change in how this is going to affect the bond market shows up after they've already filed it. It really, really puts question... I think it's a big question of the at, credibility of this mm. thing at, that a major change happened this late. At the end of the day, they are asking us to hand the keys to the same people who ended us upside Rick down the in the ditch in the first right. place. Right. Mm. At, all right, the pairs come out, what, six to eight million dollars. I'm here in Kirkwood, upwards of that. They, these are just two municipalities. They're like, this is what we're going to lose, okay? Nobody has any plan to replace it. You know, oh, oh, well, with savings here and savings there, no one has seen this, i.e., we're taking your money and it's going someplace else. And, right. I mean, there's a million reasons to be against this, but that's one that, that, that champions well, maybe all of them. Not if you live in the city. I was at an event the other night at the Eugene Field House, and people came up from Lafayette Square and Soulard, and they love it because their earnings taxes are going to be wiped away right. and they're going to get all this tax money from the county and let's say you're a member of the st louis blues or the st louis cardinals or your ownership man it's you're going to lose that one percent and when you're making millions i don't that's a pretty a nice billions, I, I agree nice. now you were mentioned talking about is it is it is it rex singfield is it uh, mrs rice what place would the mayor and the county executive stand at the forefront of destroying the city they govern and the county they govern unheard of i just don't get it well, let's move. Speaking of cities, Amazon, Wendy, the largest company in you know the world, was going to have two headquarters, one in Virginia and one in uh, New York City. Queens. But it was announced today that uh, because there was some local pushback, including from the unions in New York City, Amazon is going to give up on New York City. St. Louis did have a bid for Amazon. Um, do you think that we should go back and say, hey, Amazon, do some building here. We'll, uh, we're ready to bargain. Sure. I mean, as long as they don't do a lot of due diligence on what's happening in St. Louis <laughs> right now, I think that would be a fantastic idea. Honestly, we have nothing to lose. But uh, a sort of late-breaking development this afternoon, Governor Andrew Cuomo is just, he is annihilating with criticism members of his own party of, namely Alexandria Cortez or Ocasio Cortez, mm -hmm. and he said a very you know narrow group of the Democratic Party who you know mm -hmm. is was was 
incredibly viciously against this, and he said they have a lot of answering to do because uh, most of the polls reflected uh, that that everybody in in New York was seventy percent, right? 70%. Exactly. Well, so I, I don't. But yes, we should. Why not? Yeah. I, I don't think we should because we we didn't make the top twenty. Remember the last time? But things and have changed. If New York turns its back on you, maybe the, the Midwest will we welcome you with open make, arms. The, the thing about it is it does take time and resources to put this together. And the la right now, with everything else this community is going through, I don't think that there's, there's – first of all, I don't even know if I – mean, sure, if you could just go like that and you get 50,000 jobs, terrific. We don't need to go through another process and get set up for another set of disappointments. It would just move on. Ray, it's, it's Valentine's Day. It's a second Where's chance day for love. It's, it's not, not going the, the, the to man, the, the, the It's not man happening. man we loved chose New York, and now New York says no. We, we, we're not, not supposed happening. to say hey, we're, we're, Mr. We Bezos. We forgive you. Bill, I happening. swear you took my line. I was going to say, like, no, hey, I, I, we call him up. It's Valentine's Day to say, like, hey. I still got my flowers. I still right. got my Godivas. That's Let's right. talk. Yes. You know, talk. Hey, you gotta try. I, I, if it was I'm only flowers and Godivas, that'd yeah. be one thing. I'd but you're giving keep... away, you're, you're, uh, you're eating your seed corn uh, when you give it. And, you know, we don't have money for schools. We don't have money for anything. And we're giving the largest corporation in the world, the world's richest guy, all these tax breaks. Why? 40,000 jobs. Bring all these jobs 40, here, jobs. Yeah. Guys, we've try. got to have more <laughs> self-esteem than this. No, I do have self-esteem. We do not need to do this. Because, Ray, you see self-esteem. No, wait. You see self-esteem no. as coming, they, oh, it's going to go here, and Clayton, or there, or there. Like, no. hey, how about, like, hey, let's work no. something out where you transform East St. Louis, Illinois, and it's yours. They're not they're into not that. Going they to don't do want it. And you know what? If we don't ask, we'll never right. know. Right. No, we, we did we, ask. We, yes, we put we East asked. St. Louis as part of the proposal, Alvin, but we go blow we, up the city and the asked. county I think for we, no reason, but but not we even got too tried. much pride. We got too much pride. <laughs> no, right. no, no. Too so, proud to bend, baby. Hey, let's make it clear. <laughs> we, Jeff Bezos a, is he, interested in Jeff Bezos and not East St. Louis. And Lauren Sanchez. Just saying. Oh, and Lauren Sanchez. That's right. They just they. They hey. are not into you or into us. All right. They are not into He's us. Not well, okay. Let's try it out. reality. Moving they up. are not into us. Closer to home, St. Louis City Hall, Alvin Reed, a couple of developments in the race for Aldermanic president, which includes Megan Green, Jimmy Matthews, Jamila Nasheed, the state senator, and the incumbent, Louis Reed. Um, so we haven't talked about this, but Louis Reed was behind on his personal property taxes and that was pointed out to him if he didn't pay him within seven days he would have by state law been taken off the ballot he did pay him Jamil and Nasheed apparently has had another name Janice Williams and the Reed camp says that she should be disqualified because uh, they've mixed up the names her name on the ballot they think it should be maybe Ms. Williams and not Ms. Uh, Nasheed so what do you think about this do you think either of them should be chastise for their behavior one way or the other well let's take you know kareem abdul jabbar out of the record book because his name was lou Alcindor. right exactly you know like, <laughs> right that's silly i agree I, I, I think it's an interesting race in that um you know and, and i'm not eschewing jimmy matthews but he's jimmy matthews yeah. he runs for everything and so you have you know a, a white woman a, a black woman and, and a black man and you're thinking like oh the black candidates are going to split the vote but i'm just kind of thinking that you know the two women might split the vote and then Lewis Reed gets elected. But it's just odd that for some reason, I think the one candidate that might actually be the one to take on the traditional white voter in the city of St. Louis is the white candidate. And the one who in a bizarro kind of roundabout way has black people's best interest That's interesting. is the white candidate. Megan Green. Right, so it's, look, I don't live in the city, I don't have a vote. I will be someplace on mm. election night in regard to the aldermanic race. Well, I'll say this, I like Lewis Reed, but I think that he should have had his taxes paid up and that, you know, if you're the president of the Board of Aldermen and you're one of three members of the Board of Estimate and Apportionment, it's terrible that as a leader of the city, you haven't paid your personal I, property see, taxes. Well, and Jamila, whatever questions they had about her, her tax record, it, it, on her all of her mm -hmm. tax records, it says Jamila Nasheed, a or Janice Williams, a.k.a. Jan right. Jamila Nasheed. So I don't see where that's a huge hang-up. I, I, really I think don't. it's a zero issue. And I, I actually, agree. I don't think Lewis Reed's taxes are a big issue, particularly. What I do think is an issue, and, and if I can plug, 
As long as I'm back at the RFT, they had a wonderful story. You're plugging story. the RFT again. I'm going to because they had a wonderful story about this race. And it's amazing when you read it how deep the animosity is between Lewis Reed and Jamila. I mean, because Megan Green used to got her start with Lewis and there was mm -hmm. some bad blood there. But it was completely dwarfed by what's going on. I mean, they're really mm. firing shots at each other. And Lewis Reed, to me, needs to answer more for the fact that he has flip-flopped so often on things that involved supporting the, the powers that be. And, and the big thing to me, if I was Jamila, is running kind of, one of my themes has always been term limits. He's just been there a long time. I think much more, I think Jamila is the front runner, and mm -hmm. I think she is a really strong candidate. I think the name thing is a zero. Yeah, and I think I really, she should be focusing more on Lewis's record well, and- Well, you know, Lewis is at least, Faithful to his supporters, if you know what I mean. Absolutely, I mean, right. Know, it, it, that. The, the, the people help Lewis. Lewis helps people. Right. If it's if there's slave volume two, it's Lewis Reed. In that, been there forever. What exactly got done? And it's not anything well, that's that outstanding, other well, than the destruction of the city and the merger with well, the no, county. I mean, a NGA, yeah. and he'll point that he 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 was for the um, renovations of the Scott Trade Center now Enterprise. Oh so, I boy! Mean, now I wasn't necessarily in favor of the public support for that, but I mean, there's things like that. Hey, oh, boy. But to your point, Alvin, about Jimmy Matthews, he runs for so many offices. On his signs, it just says Jimmy Matthews. He doesn't even put the name <laughs> of the office anymore. So, you know, hey, okay, Ray, I don't know about you, but I think one of the greatest broadcasters ever, not only in right. sports, but just in broadcasting, right. is Bob Costas. And right. on Sunday on ESPN, I thought it was a profile in Courage, or kind of like a man for all seasons, where he, he stood up for his views. In this case, he felt that concussions were very injurious. Right. Right. He spoke his mind, and... It was reported that NBC, because of those views, mm -hmm. asked him to step away from the Super Bowl, and he did. He said it was kind of a relief. They mutually parted, but uh, it's tough. I, I think it's, a, it's tough when a person has to go up both against the NFL as well as his own employer, NBC. What do you think about this? Well, I think it speaks to the character of both parties. Bob Costas is a man of amazing character and, and integrity, and the NFL is pretty much the opposite. And um, I think that it was sort of his Howard Cosell moment in a lot of ways in that really taking a stand that, that I'm sure some people will say, oh, the, you know, whatever, fine, pick it apart. But, but, but he really kind of stepped outside the, the role of a normal sportscaster to make a statement that has great importance and great social meaning, and I think it'll matter. Well, look, let me let me be one of those people who takes it apart, right? Okay. I mean, I, I would be, more, I, and I like Bob Costas the times I've met him, but I would be much more impressed with this if Bob had done it earlier in his career. I mean, his career is, is over, and nothing against that. He's a wonderful, fantastic career, but when you make your great stand as you're going out the door, that's not quite as courageous as the guy who's in the midst of his career saying, you know, I'm not going to do NFL anymore because I think it's a bad thing. But he right. has been talking about this for quite a while. He has. But, yeah, yeah, but, but he hasn't but really made NBC and him had already come about, to an right? agreement yeah. that he was leaving that before this even happened. Yeah. And, you know, God bless Bob Costas, who used to do St. Louis Spirits game and spoke at the 1978 Kirkwood High School basketball banquet. And he was <laughs> but a young man. Wow. So was I. But, I mean... Kareem Hunt, who beat up a woman, signed a contract. And you got guys out there that are criminals and on and on and on. And he didn't have anything to say about that. Colin Kaepernick still doesn't have a job. People have, like, grievances, you know, huh. about, you know, um, collusion between the owners. He didn't have anything to say about that. Look, concussions are important, but a lot of water goes under that NFL bridge. I, I'm still... Uh, well, awaiting his to be fire fair, brand to be about fair. the Rams leaving. I don't uh, know. You know he, he, now, said, he, get he, right. he said, he get said, over get it. He said, get over it. That's what Randy Carrier yeah, was so upset but about. But when the Rams came here, he was somewhat critical of St. Louis taking the Rams from Los Angeles. And that was kind of a brave stand to be in St. Louis saying that. I, I actually think he has taken on uh, some of the issues, yeah. the he social has, issues he with has, the NFL. He, uh, he, has he, taken, has. he has taken on uh, TCE. He has talked about yeah. it. Uh, before CTE, CTE, CTE. Yeah. sorry about well, that. As well um, as violence in the and, NFL. And violence, and he's talked about the, the Second Amendment. He, he's walked out on a huge limb uh, with that. But the, the difference, you know, I said earlier this week that it, it's, this is tantamount to Walter Cronkite being told by CBS, you know what, you're not going to get into that whole Vietnam thing. 
he right. it was a totally different it is seriously it was a different oh. time it was a different no, time no. and yeah. and the NFL carries a big stick today in terms of money with these networks uh, the networks have to divide the audience with social media in ways that you know that never happened yeah, before and, and so i do think it's different i think wendy's right wendy's right and this the was Vietnam. this was okay. nfl the nfl made i mean you could say well they were going to do it anyway they made this their line in the sand all those other issues you talked about are valid and i wouldn't assume that bob costas hasn't weighed in on kaepernick and others i'm guessing he has on the right side sure. but but the point is and the nfl is the one that said this is a, a bridge too far no and hang that, on a second it really was nbc, NBC according to i don't mean, I don't yeah. mean yeah. nbc yeah. i mean yeah. nbc yeah. nbc yeah. but but nbc's doing the business of the nfl but the nfl no, wait no. now now that in all fairness yeah. the on. nfl they could put pressure on you. They could do a lot of things. But ultimately, the NFL didn't walk in there and say, fire Bob Costas, uh, because Bob Costas was leaving anyway. But here's and the, that's not I, fair. I, I, think the, I want to correct you guys. He wasn't really leaving. He would step down from certain roles, but he would right. still be, you know, broadcaster emerita, probably making millions a year. And to keep that, all he had to do was squelch his opinions on just CTE. Off, right. he, he could have just been yeah, quiet right. and had uh, another editorial that night. Right. And, and NBC. Well, I if think it was, it was popular because he did that stuff. And I, I just think you're making a little too much of it. I agree. Where the guy's on his way out and says, you know, I think this is awful. No, okay, but I agree. Like, well, yeah, I don't think you yeah, Just wait right. to the last week. I'm on Donnybrook. See what I oh, say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, yeah, hey. of course. <laughs> Rex will see to that. Bill <laughs> McClellan. <laughs> Bill, one of the saddest uh, stories in a long time, this uh, Trenton Forster, who... Shot and killed Blake Snyder, the St. Louis County police officer, two years ago, and a jury convicted him of uh, first-degree homicide this past Friday. I thought it should have been second-degree because of his uh, long series of uh, mental problems, but uh, you believe that it should have been first-degree, correct? Oh, sure. I thought uh, first-degree completely. I mean, the, the thing that people haven't talked about on this case that struck me is this is an argument against the death penalty because you know this this is a kid who decided he was going to kill a cop and he did kill a cop and bob mccullough made the decision we're not going to go for death on him i remember when a young man killed a police officer on the delmar loop when a young man killed a police officer in kirkwood those were death penalty cases those kids probably had some kind of mental problems too i mean somebody in their right mind doesn't decide to kill a police officer. And so I think if this kid wasn't facing the death penalty, why should somebody else? So I, I thought that this really is an, you know, and I've been a proponent of the death penalty, been a state's witness at executions, but I thought this was an argument for Wesley Bell being right about, you know, because this was Bob McCullough's decision not to seek it. And if you're not going to seek it for this, when are you going to seek it? And you know, all let a jury make a decision, but not. Right, and as I say, in all three of those cases, the, the person who shot the police officer was not committing a crime at the time where there was some kind of gunfire right. or what. There was no, they had decided that they were going to kill a police officer. Right. I, I thought that this gentleman, gentleman, I, I, I don't, maybe I use that word loosely, but. but Understood. I, I thought that he should have gotten the death penalty when the young man from Kirkwood got it. I said, for those who testified on his behalf, I know some that did, that the police don't give him the death penalty. I said, well, he killed a police officer. And when you kill a police officer, that's the, that's the fate that you leave in a judge's or a jury's hands. This should have been in a jury's hands. This, there is no way that I think that Bob McCullough should have not sought the death penalty on him. I, I, I agree with Bill on this, and I don't think, I don't criticize Bob McCullough, but it is interesting to think what the reaction if this was because Bob McCullough isn't going to get called wasn't let's say he had been reelected wouldn't have gotten called out but to your point if this was a new fresh case going forward watch when West if there's one involving a tragedy and hopefully we won't have one but if we have a tragedy like this and Wesley Bell doesn't call for the death penalty the reaction. Any, any, well, let me just anyone, 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 somebody like me have second the thoughts push about the death penalty. Anyone who will kill a police thoughts. officer will kill anybody and so i agree with alvin i think yeah but uh i mean do we think that a mentally ill person i from what i understand he was mentally ill is responsible for his actions to the first degree homicide y yes i really? do i think that could be i think that could be a jury could decide yes we are holding him accountable for his actions 
And I don't make light of it, but maybe they, it is fair to say, like, we don't think he was that mentally disturbed. <laughs> and if you are that, where you could have a job and you could be going looking for guns and you could be doing this, doing that, maybe you aren't all that nut. And Bill yeah. is right. I mean, I, I disagree and with let me, you it, finally, oh, but, but you're, you're absolutely right. Huh. If everybody who is going to do that, who's going to kill a police officer, has something going on. And well, these but, cases but, but this, call this guy does have a history of hospitalizations for mental illness and drugs, which may have been connected to the mental illness. I don't know. I, uh, but I don't know if everyone who shoots a cop has that uh, hospitalization well, well, they're record. Not, they're not oh. right. There's something right. wrong with them yeah. if you decide mm. what I'm going to do is kill up. a police officer. Right. Well, it's definitely they're a bad, right. bad well, choice that day, but I don't know if it necessarily means you're uh, psychologically impaired. Well, Charlie, right. and you, you're right to bring okay. that up. We're getting the, we're okay. getting the time out. Right. You're I take apologize those. for using hey, the term no, hey. nuts, okay? That hey, was wrong. Uh, and I, it's I apologize Donnie Brooks. Let's that. go to the old mailbag. Last week, the Donnybrook panel speculated what involvement Civic Progress has with Better Together. Hopefully, it's not the same involvement they had in concocting the Rams deal or the same role in the football Cardinals' last days here. That from Timothy King of St. Louis. Rich Lusk wrote, a girl should inform her parents if she wants to get a cosmological procedure, we said. Actually, if any of my kids wanted to get a cosmological procedure, they should see the head of the WashU Physics Department. That from Rich Lusk. We heard from Christine Burke, who wrote, Amy Mark's course was really good for her first time. I think you should bring her back more often. You can have a woman fill in when one of you guys is on vacation. Wendy shouldn't be your token female these days. Thank you. And we heard from Kylie Dennis. How about an Asian, Native American, or Latina woman, or trans? Six people around the table is not too many. That from Kylie Dennis. We'd like to hear from you. Write to Donnie Brook, care of KETC, 63108. We also love those emails and those tweets. And we want you to watch our podcast because we're on Apple and we're on many different <laughs> venues, including Spotify, TuneIn, and Google Play. The founders are going to have a special Valentine's Day edition of Your Turn. That's right. Ray Hartman and Bill McClellan in their 32nd year will be taking your phone calls in just a matter of moments. Everybody else sees you next week at this time. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Donnybrook is made possible by the members of the Nine Network. Good evening. Uh, welcome to Donnybrook, your turn. I'm Bill McClellan, assisting Ray Hartman this evening. And we're anxious to hear what the viewers think tonight. We'd like to change this to Ask the Founders, but we're ask really not founders. founders. All we, right. I, I like we were that just too. lucky to audition <laughs> and to make it. So we'll go right to Clifford from Sunset Hills. Welcome to the show, Clifford. How are you? What's on your mind, Clifford? We have Clifford? Clifford? Well, okay, we might have a technical problem. We've got here. Bill from Rock Hill. I recognize well, that name. I can always get through. I don't know what Clifford's problem is. I feel bad for him, but hey, Ray. He'll come back. I, I'd like to know who elected Rex Singfeld dictator of Missouri. I mean, this whole better together thing I'm getting quite resentful of because I don't know who he thinks he is that he can just come along and dictate. And I think the fact that, you know, you pointed out earlier that they're going to have some, quote, public forums, unquote, but, you know, they're only going to be for, like, 250 people. It's like, heck, One they need to rent the dome out for this. I mean, the Rams aren't using it. I mean, you know, I think some people are getting a little tired of this. It's like they don't like this man that doesn't live here, doesn't pay taxes here, and doesn't vote here, dictating what the future of our metropolitan area is. 
I mean, who does he think he is? Well, you know, I, I, I always defend Rex Sinfield in the sense that he's upfront about what he does. He doesn't try to be a uh, backdoor guy, although we always call him the man behind the curtain. He's upfront with what he does. And while I disagree with him on most of his policies and certainly on this Better Together stuff, he, he's spending his own money doing what he thinks is going to help the city and, and the region. I disagree with him, but I'm not as angry with him as you are, Bill, and as a lot of other people are. And I, I have to tell you, I think the 150-person limit is just, and sure, just a, that's that's a care. You know, to me, that's a choreographed television show. That's sure. not. I mean, give me a break. You know, I mean, this is something of broad. If it's a public hearing, the idea that they're limiting it like that is just to me. Ridiculous. I think it's just, you know, one of the things Rex Singfield's done that's been wonderful for St. Louis is the chess hall of fame, the chess, sure. the whole chess uh, uh, museum and hall of fame, whatever that he's created here. And he's a master chess player, and that's how he looks at this. He's playing chess. Well, we'll see. Uh, but, but, uh, hey, thanks for the call, Bill. What's next? And let's move to Philip from Fenton. Hello. Good evening. Hey, hey, Philip. Philip. Uh, just calling about the comments regarding Amazon coming yeah. back to St. Louis and was just wondering, uh, I started business in St. Louis about 10 years ago, and at that time I've seen businesses leave and think about Detroit and what happened to Detroit and the revitalization. And, you know, businesses go to where it's easy to do business and making the structure of, the county, the city, the whole environment of St. Louis just being more business friendly instead of bribing or paying or giving tax benefits would be a better long-term approach for the future and success of, of our community, I think. Okay, okay that's we'll a thought, that. thoughtful comment, Philip. It remains to be seen whether the Better Together plan would accomplish that, but, but it's a Thoughtful remark. And, it uh, is a thoughtful remark. You. And the Better Together plan has nothing to do with regionalism. So, I mean, it's got well, city county. It doesn't. I mean, ha more than half the people live outside the city and county. Well, but Philip wasn't saying it was no, about No, no, no. I agree with Philip. I think oh, okay. Philip's well, then, then, great then, then, Let's go on to somebody else. Right? Great, great we, comment. Thank you for the call, Philip. Let's go to Dan from Manchester. Hey, Dan. What's on your mind, uh, Dan? Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for taking my call. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm just commenting on the op-ed piece from the ex-chiefs. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, it seems like uh, I don't know whether he's a PR guy, but we we find him at everything. You know, he's everything to everybody too. But uh, he commented on the Catholic supply situation, and yeah, he was at the at the Blake Snyder thing. And I mean, it always seems like he shows up just to let us know that he's running for uh, county executive in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I think you know that op-ed piece was nothing but just grandstanding just to separate people and get votes. All right. Well, that's an interesting thought, Dan. Uh, Tim Fitch certainly is a man who is a, uh, aware of the spotlight and, and handles the media very well. I mean, we all like him. He returns phone calls and everything. He's not but, shy. Uh, you, you bring up, those are good observations, Dan. Thank you. He's not shy. Who's next, Bill? We got Fred from Florissant. Yes, thanks for taking my sure. call. Uh, in regards to the uh, Better Together, I think there was, uh, on the major issue of police, I think it was too much of a kick-the-can-down-the-road uh, atmosphere. For example, the U.S. Department of Justice says that the average is for sworn police officers is 250 per 100,000. And we don't have that in our, probably a lot of folks don't have that. Now, I'll state that would mean 2.5 sworn police officers per a thousand well you can see barney and andy as an example <laughs> um uh so uh ten thousand would be 25 i think as you i think we need to get that issue resolved we need to have more sworn police officers and i think if you don't get that resolved and because that's the other uh effort was all about police and i think that's indicative indicative of the fact that we need to solve that first. Okay. Thanks. Okay, I hadn't even thought of that. Fred, that's interesting. All right, let's go to the Twitterverse. 
from Craig Riggins. It's a shame the race for board of president in the city is disintegrated into a public display of contempt Jamila Nasheed and Lewis Reed have for each other. The voters deserve to know their positions on issues, not each other. Thank you for that tweet. Who's next? Keep going. Oh, Danimal from S Danimal <laughs> STL. Alvin mentioned Kirkwood said they would lose six to eight million in revenue under Better Together. Their police budget, which would go away, is projected at eight point four million. So isn't that a wash, if not a savings? Um, I'd have to let Alvin. Yeah, I, mean, I, I wish Alvin would hear. Alvin probably but, is uh, more aware of uh, the Kirkwood financial stuff you know, than, than we are. It's interesting. We've gotten comments from Kirkwood and Florissant, which are two uh, from two very different parts of the region that represent two of the really uh, kind of communities that have cities that have the most pride. I mean, Florissant goes back to sure. before statehood and Kirkwood, um, such established communities that. Uh, having a little trouble with Better Together's plan. Um, we thank you. Uh, send your ha uh, tweets to hashtag DonnybrookSTL. And Mike from St. Louis. Who's, what's on your mind, Mike? Well, yeah, I'd like to talk about this county merger thing with the city. I see no benefit for the city of St. Louis to merge with the county. They're a headache looking for some place to rest. The other part of this thing is the federal government just dropped a bankroll on this city. Not just that uh, deal going on in our city, and that's good, but that uh, thing at the arch. That should have been a springboard for a money machine for tourism going all the way down to Jefferson Barracks, which should be taken from the county. And all this thing should be a development tourism going all the way out to the west on something with some vision like a monorail for instance big time thinking for big money because right now this city is sitting on a bankroll and nobody is even blinking okay. at it but thanks now, for that's all i have to say all right. you guys i okay. think we lost we had a little reception problem there yeah but, uh, yeah thank you for the call mike now, I, I'm not sure, uh, Mike, if, if the city d is sitting on a whole bunch of money right now. Yeah. I mean, you know, that, uh, what's the term, Ray, for funds, dedicated funds for right. the right. Uh, arch probably couldn't be used on a monorail. Correct. But but at any rate, that's, that's uh, a federal thing. But, but interesting and, and, and Maybe the money could be better spent. Thank you, Mike. I don't think the city's sitting on a lot of money. I, I, don't, I don't think it's as upside down as Tim Fitch thinks it is. But um, this is going to be... Uh, I keep saying it's going to be an issue with us for the next 21 months. So it's well, it's going to be interesting <laughs> to hear. What's yeah, uh, who's next? Got Sandra also from St. Louis. What's on your mind, Sandra? Well, I I observe every municipality, every little fiefdom, so worried out in the counties about their oxes being gored, mm -hmm. and I keep wondering when are they going to wake up to understand that the city needs the help. From the counties, and it's always going to be that way. Okay, you know that's a that's a good question, and that's being very honest about it, Sandra. I mean, a, a lot of supporters of this don't want to make it look like the city is desperate to get its hands on uh, county assets, which, which I think is the only real argument that could be made for this. But so that's an honest way to look at it, I think, Sandra. I think it is. I, I, let me. The city isn't bringing nothing to the table. I mean, the city brings, I mean, the city does include most of our cultural institutions. Of course it does. And the Grand Center area that we're in broadcasting from and a great, you know. But the, people get that without the merger, right? Right, I get it. But I mean, in fairness, it's not like I would like us and have felt forever that we should be merged and think as a, as a, as a whole. The, the big issues here are, in my mind, are the are the lack of the, the anti-democratic process, and the fact that a lot of the claims that are being made about this just aren't real. Uh, but let's go to Jr. from St. Louis. Jr., what's on your mind? Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Hopefully, the young man who murdered the policeman will 
get the death penalty when he gets to prison. Thank you. Okay, that's that's an interesting uh, thought, see. Jr. Uh, I don't even. I'm not. I'm really not know really, how to respond. I, I'm, I'm not down with that. But uh, let's go right. on. Who's next? It's the thank you for the call. Let's go to Lori, also from St. Louis. Hey, Lori. Oh, uh, hi. Hi. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just have a comment. I live in the city, and uh, I forgot who mentioned on there, but they discussed uh, the city declaring bankruptcy. Maybe they needed to do that. Yeah. Now, my concern is, is my husband's a retired firefighter. My son-in-law is a firefighter. I have a lot of friends who live in this, who work for the city, and that would, um, you know, hurt our pension, as you said. I think my big issue is, and no offense, but all you guys live in the county, and you're making all these comments about the city, and you know that this is our welfare. Right. I would like to see someone from the city on your panel who actually lives in the inner city, who pays the taxes here. And, um, you know, is, is affected by the city levy. Not that you guys don't, you know, support us. Right. But, okay. you know, let's face it, when someone from the county says, oh, just declare bankruptcy, you're talking about, you know, my income and something my husband worked 35 years for on the fire department. Well, if, if I am sure. on your, I happen to be on your side on that issue and, and have spent a fair amount of my life in the city as well. But I, I understand. I, I don't think where we live is necessarily you know indicative of what we think i mean in this particular case my i'm the one that expressed the concern that in detroit uh pensioners lost 25 percent of their pensions when they did bankruptcy i i think it is you know so but but i understand your concern uh we appreciate your your call so okay we go to clifford from sunset hills gentlemen another lively conversation tonight thank you uh, Talking about uh, better together, first of all, uh, the earnings tax is, in fact, an albatross around the neck of the city. I'll cite you an example. I have a relative who worked in the county. The company was transferred into the city. They had to start paying the 1% city earnings tax. Uh, the company did not make up the difference. And so a company that is looking at cities... Uh, would think twice, perhaps, about uh, locating in a place where they had to pay an earnings tax, which they will have to make up that to their employees, probably. Uh, so that's, again, as all many issues, it's all about the money. Well, you know, you know uh, if I could interrupt you for a second, I, I've uh, paid the 1% earnings tax, you know, uh, since I've worked on the paper and ever since I, I left the city. Uh, and I've, well, I've never felt that I was being cheated out of that 1% because when you when you go in the city whether you're going in there to work or going in there for a ball game you expect you know the streets to be clean you expect police protection and and that 1% seems like kind of a cheap price to pay for that I, it, I I completely agree with Bill I don't think it I don't think it has any impact and I just don't I mean I, I want to say no impact but but Keep in mind that when Rex Sinkfield forced the voters of St. Louis and Kansas City to conduct elections about their city earnings tax, they passed in both cities with extraordinary majorities. I mean, almost 80, in the neighborhood, I want to say of 80% of people voting to tax themselves, which I think speaks pretty clearly to that. But uh, we do appreciate yeah, uh, your they, call. And let's go to, yeah. I believe, Mike in St. Louis. Hey, Mike, what's on your mind? Yeah, my alder, Megan Green, brought up this point. I'm wondering what happens to city water with the merger. Uh, Mayor Slay wanted to sell it off. Do we sell it off if we have this merger? That's a great question, I, and, and I, I have no idea the answer to that. Do you have any, anything? I do not know. I know MSD is unaffected because it's a broader deal, okay. but I don't, I don't know the answer on... Uh, Okay. On water, and we'll... Uh, and then uh, we'll... your, your alderman, alder person, didn't yeah, know either, me. Mike? She was wondering? That, well, alderman Megan Green right. brought up that issue, and okay. it seems like with the airport sell-off and the water sell-off, right. this can't be a good deal. Well, and Megan, maybe Megan, Megan, of course, is one of the three candidates for president of the Board of Aldermen, and uh, we appreciate the call. Yeah, thank you. 
We go to Stan, also from St. Louis. Stan. Oh, hi. Uh, thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, I, I've lived here all my life, and I, I love the region. In, in St. Louis, it is a region to the rest of the world, whether you like it or not. And I think you really have to be a lower IQ person not to realize that it needs to be one big county like Kansas City, Jackson County, and uh, Nashville has recently changed it to whatever county they have. And, and that's just the way things work, particularly in this day and age of high tech, et cetera, et cetera. This, this separation is so stupid that – to me, it's mind-boggling. Uh, we we have to get going again, or, or we're just not going to be. We're just going to continue to deteriorate if we don't get it together. Okay, Stan. Thank you. Sure, and and of course, Stan, they're not just suggesting that St. Louis become part of St. Louis County. I mean, they're suggesting really that the county dissolve into the city. I mean, that it become right. one right. entity. And just so it's, it's a, a little different, but and I, you're I, right, Sam. What we're doing now, we we're having problems. Well, I'll, I'll go along with being one part of the lower IQ people, but let me be clear about one thing: this is not regionalism. City and county getting together, which I've, I've advocated. Keep in mind, fewer people live in the St. Louis city plus the county than live outside of the two in the St. Louis area. The the region where less than 50% of the region is city and county. And it used to be 80, 85% as recently as 1970. So this is not regionalism we're talking about. We're talking about governance, whatever you think about it. Most people from the St. Louis area will continue to live outside of either the city and county. That's an important point. Let's go to the Twitterverse. And we will go to Joni 820-35791. <laughs> I am sure the man who shot our police officer was examined by forensic psychologist, wasn't he? The news reported him as very manipulative. So what mental illness? What if this manipulative criminal should escape? Death penalty for anyone who shoots a cop. Let's go to Liz Will. Good for Costas for speaking out about concussion CTE. The issue is bigger than all other football related controversies wrapped together. I agree with and that. I completely agree with her. And from Mike Beneke, it may be time to revisit the policy of skipping news topics in which panelists all agree on. I think you are doing Donnybrook viewers a disservice by not covering a lot of national topics in the age of Trump. Appreciate that th sentiment from Mike Beneke and send them all to Donny hashtag Donnybrook STL. Okay, thank you for those. Uh, Let's go to Judy O'Fallon, Judy from O'Fallon, Missouri. What's on Judy. your mind, Judy? Uh, well, I just wanted to make a comment. I feel so sad for families of the police officers that are, are getting murdered, and I just think there's too many guns on the street. They have more guns than the police officers have. Right. Um, and I just wish that, that something could be done about the gun situation. Um, that's that's just my comment. I want to thank you for your show. I, I enjoy it immensely. Well, thank, thank you. you. First of all, thank, thank you, you for watching it and for our viewers. And I agree with both of your sentiments. I mean, we all just are heartbroken for the family of the officer and, and any officer that, that gives up his, his or her uh, life in the line of duty. And um, I sure wish we had fewer guns, too. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you for that. We now go to Charlie from North County. Hey, Charlie. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, good evening. Thanks for taking the call. Sure. I, uh, my comment was that uh, I wanted to say that I heard um, that the reason there's so many municipalities is uh, back when the subdivisions and, and housing was booming, that part of the Federal funding for infrastructure, street sewers, and things like that came only if you were incorporated. So that kind of makes sense why there's so many municipalities in the county. Um, and then my other comment would simply be that, uh, you know, I wonder if Mr. Singfield would be better served to just put his, uh, make a donation to the city if it would be money better used. Thank you. 
Okay, yeah. so th there you Charlie. Two interesting points. And, and on that first one, it, it's almost uh, like a mythology story of how things happened. I've never even thought of how we ended up with so many municipalities. Maybe uh, that origin story is true. I don't know. Yeah. Let's go to Ron from Soulard. Hello, Ron. What's on your mind? Well, thank you for taking my call. As usual, sure. it's a wonderful program. Thank you. Lewis Reed has been in there for a long time. But the one thing that everybody should look at is crime in the city of St. Louis. Over 800 murders in four years of him being in the Board of Aldermen. And, it, and it, the people of St. Louis are looking some, for the number one thing is for somebody to fight crime. He's not the one. His time is over. We need a crime fighter to help build the city first fight the crime. Thank you very much. Th okay, thank, thank you. you. And that's interesting. You know, our, our number one crime fighter really is uh, Judge Jimmy Edwards, who's director of public safety. And I can't think of a better guy, a more real, legitimate fellow than Jimmy Edwards. And so it's disheartening that things seem to be bouncing along. I wouldn't... Blame well, I was just the board say, of aldermen. I, I, or, you know, Lewis, both Jamil and Nasheed and Megan Green have made the argument that Lewis Reed, because he's been, you know, president of the board for I think 12 years, represents the status quo. And if you're upset with the status quo, that's certainly something to consider. But but I think it's really unfair to lay crime at Lewis Reed's doorstep. I mean, in other words, I think Lewis Reed's a good guy who's as concerned about crime as anybody else is. Right. And, you know, I don't but know but, but like like Gray says, if you it's, don't like the uh, yeah, you know, established order, then you probably get rid of it. You, that's a fair fair. Okay, point. hey, thank you very much. Let's go to Gus from St. Louis. Gus. Hey, Gus, what's on your mind? Yeah, good afternoon or good evening, guys. First off, I have to agree with Bill. I worked for Judge Edwards for 17 years, and you couldn't have found a better guy for no, that job. Absolutely. Uh, but the reason I called was Jimmy Matthews. <laughs> How does this guy? fund himself for all these uh, runs that he makes. He's like the old, I'm going to date myself, the old Homer McCracken who ran for everything. And, you know, the guy, I, I'm not sure how he, he funds himself. He's out there all the time. It's interesting. I sometimes wonder if uh, Jimmy Matthews wouldn't be like the dog who finally caught the car. You know, what in the world do you do now? But I, I uh, you know, I've dealt I, with Jimmy Matthews for a long time, and he's always been a affable fellow. But I, you're right; he, th this is what Jimmy Matthews does: is run for stuff. You know what? And I think it's great. It's America. You know, I mean, good for yeah. him. They say Bill Haas. You know, people get very cynical about these some of the perennial candidates. It's America. You can run for office. I mean, and I to answer your question about how he funds himself, I'm guessing. Not with a lot of money, but he runs, and yeah, yes he does. he's out there, and he takes part in the forums. Right. And, and good Gus, for him. I think it's kind of fun that we have right. candidates. Thanks, like thanks that. for bringing it up, Gus, let's, and thanks for agreeing with me. Okay, let's go to Larry from Maplewood. Hey, Larry, what's on your mind? Yes, I'd like to ask. Nobody's brought it up. Who's going to manage the money from the city and the county? And they cannot handle their own money in the city. We're going. They're going broke. And they want to take our money. Well, and they're going to sell the airport. I never knew that. I thought they were going to have somebody manage the airport. Uh, no, the plan is to try to sell it. If well, if the, that works out, they say. I, that's not really, in fairness, that's not part of Better Together's plan. I mean, that's that's a lot well, of people. But, think but, but it's, Rex Sinfield is a big believer right, in privatizing right. the airport. Correct. Right? correct. So it's hard not to. Correct. No, no. Together. But in fairness, to Better Together, that's not. <laughs> but but. We appreciate the call, Larry. I think we have time for one more. Who's Okay, let's go to Tony from Manchester. Hey, Tony, what's on your mind? Oh, th thank you. Uh, I'm 71 years old and have resided in the county for 71 of those years. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of activity uh, going on in the city now, Ballpark Village and a few other things. But I also know in the city there's a lot of deterioration of the infrastructure. I'd like to know if you can find out, and I never heard this, what is the bond rating of the city right now as opposed to St. Louis County? I understand the bond rating in the city is near junk, and St. Louis County is AAA. 
I would like I, for somebody in the news to verify this because that is a okay. Hey, we're, we're running out of money, but I don't think that it's junk bond. No, no, I don't. I don't think city. either of those are right. actually. I, I think the I don't think county is AAA. And the city is not bond rating. I don't keep track of. It's not that bad. But what what is unfortunate is we're out of time, and we want to thank you all for watching, Donnie Brook. In your turn, we will see you again next Thursday, and get ready for some cold weather. <laughs>